We have ignition. It's time! 17 seconds from game seven, or from championship number six. Jordan, open, Chicago with the lead! I've got a piece of it, it comes off, the Chicago Bulls. Tying run at second, two out. Palmero over the head of Jenks. Uribe charges close. Out! And the White Sox have won the World Series. To the far side around the eight yard line to Hester. Under it and to the middle of the 15, to the 20, breaks three of the 25, to the 30, to the outside. 40, midfield. 40, 30 of the coast. 20, 15, Hester five. Oh! He will cover it for the Rizzo. It's in time. And the Chicago Cubs win the World Series. What up, what up, what up? Welcome to Sean and Maya in the morning on this hump day edition. I'm your boy, the Superback, Sean Sierra. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, well, then I guess you found us on Facebook. And if you're not following us on Facebook, what? Go to listen, go to Facebook, type in Sports Zone Chicago, click the like button, and now you're following Sports Zone Chicago. Simple. But wait, there's more. Go to the show's page. Go to Sean and Maya in the morning. Like that page as well. So not only will you be following Sports Zone Chicago, but you'll be following the show's page, Sean and Maya in the morning as well. If you're watching us on our YouTube channel, excellent. And if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, for real, for real. Come on, man. Go to YouTube, type in Sports Zone Chicago. All right, click the subscribe button. Okay. Click the subscribe button. Got it? All right. Also, click click the notification button. That's the little bell, okay? That's right next to the uh, subscription. All right, it's this little bell, and that'll let you know any time a show from Sports Zone Chicago is going live. You get it? Got it? Good. Now, if you're watching this on our mobile app, wait, please don't tell me you didn't know we had a mobile app. What are you doing? What you problem is? Come on, man. We have a mobile app. Oh, Charlie. So listen, wherever you get your apps from, and it doesn't matter whether it's iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Walmart, Kmart, 7-Eleven, Zare, Zemsky, Macy, Montgomery, Ward, Woolworth, Venture, Webolts, Gold Blast, wherever you, you type in Sports Zone Chicago, you download it, you take us with you on the go. So not only do you get Sean and Maya in the morning three days a week, not only do you get our other live shows throughout the week, not only are they archived there like they are on Facebook and YouTube, but I'll tell you what, we give you a slew, and I mean a slew of articles, thanks to my man Clarence, Council the third big up to Clarence for keeping your breast of art of all articles Chicago sports related. Now, if you're watching us on our Roku channel, I like that kind of party, baby. And if wait, please don't tell me you didn't know what man. Come on now. You got to get with the get with the program. You got to keep up with the Joneses and them. All the Joneses and we have our own. Oh, not that one. We have our own Roku channel. Yes, we do, doctor. And listen, if you have a Roku television in the house, do us a favor. Download Sports Zone Chicago's channel. Okay? Download it. Put it right there next to Netflix, Hulu, Apple, Prime, Disney Plus, Stars. Man, BMF is getting good. It's starting to get good. Paramount Plus. You know, you guys get to watch your Yellowstone. Showtime, download it, put it right there, all right? You can watch us on a big screen. Hell, we're on a big screen, right? Mickey, Ficky, now. Now, you can also tweet the show. You can tweet us at Sports Zone Shy. That's C-H-I, at Sports Zone Shy. But if you want to follow me, just me. Personally online, you want to know what I did? Well, let me tell you what I did. I made it nice and easy for you folks. Nice and easy. One handle for Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and TikTok. All one handle at the Sean Sierra. Want to follow my lovely co-host Maya Akai? You can follow her on Facebook and Twitter at the Sports Chica. 
If you want to follow her on Instagram, because you're an IG -er and you do it just for the gram, we'll just follow her at Maya underscore Kai. M A Y A underscore A K A I. We have a great show, but I need you, you to get interactive. So listen, whatever platform you're watching this on, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram. I'm sorry, <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> Facebook, YouTube, a mobile app. Leave a question or comment on that platform. It'll come up here on the thread. We'll put it up on the screen. We'll incorporate it into the show. And that, my peoples, that's what makes this the most or the best morning Chicago sports talk show around. And it's you. So bring them all, baby. Questions, comments, smart-ass remarks, because ain't nobody scared over here. Like The Rock said, like he was here Monday. He was in town on Monday. Like he said, baby, don't sing it. Just bring it. Do me a big favor, though. Before we go any further, do me a favor. If you're in the chat, do me a big, big favor. Do me a favor. Did I mention if you could do me a favor? Do me a favor. Sit, hit that like button. All right, smash that like button for me, please. Pretty please with sugar on top. It makes it a lot easier for me to move around and do stuff that I want to do for you guys. All right, I need views and likes. You got to have interaction, so I got to have likes as well. All right. Let's see who we got in the, the chat already. We got Cornelia Squalls in the house. What up? Armando, Emeterio, Lara, Junior. What's up, my man? It's my man, Junior. He is the pirate lover. <laughs> Michelle Walls, what's up, baby? Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Trapper, Keeper, in his mother, Hubbard. Hell yeah. Good morning, Papa. Good morning. AC Adam in this joint. That's what I'm talking about. Black Diamond, Bear Down, Papa. That's what I'm talking about. Bear down oh snap king book of world in this joint that's what i'm talking about king book of world yay 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 hey see adam in this joint oh charlie that's what i mean man i got i love the usual man whoo these are my peoples all the peoples brandon shuts in the house good morning papa thank you for tuning in happy hump day jason jones up in this joker yeah wait wait trapper keeper are you in puerto rico are you in Puerto Rico? Is that what the PR stands for? Trapper Keeper, are you in Puerto Rico? Hey, Black Diamond. Hey, you know what? Thank you, Papa. I appreciate it, but no, no, no need. I got I got plenty of toilet paper in the, uh, in the house. Don't worry. I went to, San, to Costco the other day. I'm good. I got all the toilet paper I need. But thank you, though. Good looking out. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Oh, good. <laughs> Oh, you're Chicago right now. You're going back soon. Oh, I, I know some people just got back from uh, Puerto Rico. A couple of my friends are in Puerto Rico. Some are, are just got back the last day or two. Some are still there. You know, I still have never been to Puerto Rico. And there's probably a picture of me. And, ooh, there's probably a picture of me. Oh, I don't like that one either. That light either. There we go. Uh, at the airport, because my friends from college are from the island. And they're like... John, how can you, you're going to come to visit me in Puerto Rico, right? I'm like, of course. Yeah, of course I'm going to go. Yeah. Well, I graduated college in 93. <laughs> and I we're friends on Facebook. And every so often, they'll send me a, a text or a message. When you come to Puerto Rico. <laughs> when you come to Puerto Rico. <laughs> so they might have a, a picture, my picture at the uh, at the airport at, uh, at the Swan, San Juan Airport. And, uh, man, there'll be some people coming to attack me, give me a pumpkin head. It took you 30 years to get here, fool. <laughs> no, but I heard I heard it's a gorgeous island. And then the surrounding islands, Culebra, Vieques, uh, I heard those places are wonderful as well. Like I said, a friend just got back yesterday, as a matter of fact. Uh, man, it, so, yeah, it's a place I have to go. And I have to go for a week because I'd want to go, I'd want to stay, like, probably be like 10 days but at the, you know what puerto rico is the type of place that i think you'd have to you'd have to go a few times because of the different um climates if you got a rainforest there you have the the beaches there you have san juan you have old san juan you got to check out but also you have the little the 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 hidden beaches or the small beaches like the locals the natives know then you have the islands like culebra and, and vieques like i was saying so there's a lot to see, and it's a small island. I mean, it's it's big, and it's like for, it's like from Cleveland to Chicago, like that big. But if in the big scheme of things, if you look at the size of the United States, it's not very big. But so yeah, I definitely got to go there, and I don't even have to worry about. I don't need a real ID. <laughs> it's a, it's a it's the United States. 
But anyway, I digress. Puerto Rico is gorgeous from what I hear, and I can't wait to go check it out for myself. Michelle Walls in the Mickey Ficky house. Good morning, Papa. It is your mother's birthday. Tell your mama happy birthday. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, we got a great show for you. We get started early at 930, my man. Adam Shalafu uh, is going to join us. We're going to talk a little Bulls basketball. <laughs> no, no way to get back to me now, buddy. <laughs> really, bro? Really? <laughs> uh, some people. <laughs> anyway, Adam Shalafu, we're going to talk a little Bulls at 930 at the bottom of the hour and at 10 o'clock at the top of the hour. Um, I think, no. Yeah, he'll be on at 10. My man, Coach T, is in the house. We're going to talk a little Bears, what he sees, which quarterback he likes, what to do with number nine. We've got a lot to talk about with Coach T. So, man, we got a phenomenal, phenomenal show, baby. You know how I do. Fool, you know how we do it. <laughs> I was watching this, watching something with Ice Cube yesterday, in addition to everything that's going on with Puff Daddy, but <laughs> I, that's a different show. <laughs> that's a different show. Don't worry about him flying to a Caribbean island with no extradition laws there. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> he's like, I'm out. Sorry, my my sons. I'm out. I gotta go. I can't get caught. I can't get caught, guys. I know you're my sons, but I gotta go to. And I did with no extradition. <laughs> that sick son of a gun. Anyway, guys, you know how we do the first segment of every show. It's called Top of the Morning. She won't come just when you want it. Yeah, yeah, the first top of the morning topic. Which way do we go? Which way do we go? Which way do we go? You know which way we go. <clears throat> Puts a little smile on my face. <laughs> the Cubs! <laughs> In their final preseason, or spring training game, final preseason game, the Cubs fall to the St. Louis Cardinals, their arch rival, 7-2. to two, Out in Sloan Park in Mesa, Arizona. Uh, Imanaga. Got the start. He got the loss. He's two and two on the spring with three innings. It hits four earned runs, a walk, six punch outs. Talkman. He was one for one, hitting, hitting his third homer of the year, driving in his seventh run of the year. And Franklin was one for two, knocking out his second dinger of the season, driving in his third RBI of the spring. Next top of the morning topic the Blackhawks, baby. Yay, yay. The Blackhawks beat the Calgary. The Calgary, no, the Calgary Flames yesterday, 3-1. to one. Um, Mrazek stopped 38 of 39 shots. Jones. Seth Jones with his seventh lamp lighter of the season. Dickinson with his 19th and 20th lamp lighters of the year. Uh, Kurashev. The assists go to Kurashev, his 32nd of the season. Connor Bedard, his 35th of the season. Anderson with his 10th and 11th helpers of the season. And Slaggart with his first and second helpers of the season. Man, let me tell you something. I told you this team, this team is not very good, but they're exciting. They're young. They just need to continue to add talent, and this team will be will be there. They will be there. That I can promise you. All right. It was gonna take a couple years, but they'll be there. And oh, here we go. Sorry about that. And by the way, the Bulls, the Bulls tonight, they host the Indiana Pacers. At the United Center, tip off at 7 o'clock. You can catch that game on NBC Sports Chicago. Or if you want to listen to it on their flagship, you can check it out on 670 AM. Both the Cubs and Sox are off today as they prepare for the uh, opening day. The Cubs are going to be in Texas. My White Sox are going to start are going to start on 35th in Shields, Manana. It's going to be a great game tomorrow against Texas. I mean, against Detroit. Excuse me. Um, that game's at 310. All right. You can catch that game on NBC Sports Chicago and or listen to that on the flagship at 
AM 1000. The Cubs, they're not going to be on a marquee. They're going to be on ESPN tomorrow night, 635 Central. So check them out on ESPN. Or if you want to listen to them, you can check them out on their flagship, 670 AM. Um, the last topic on the topic, the fighting Illini in the sweet in the sweet 16, baby. Um, this is fun. It's good when Illinois basketball is relevant. Okay. It was great back in 89 when I was a senior in high school. And that was a Nick Anderson, Kenneth, uh, Kendall Gill, Marcus Liberty. All right. It was that crew. Um, and then again, in 06, was it six or five? Well, with D Brown, Darren Brown, that whole crew got, man, that was awesome. And it's good. And I, you know what? Kendall Gill's been on, been on here plenty of times. And he was telling us that that team, that Illinois team, every single person on that team, including the ball boys and the managers, from the state of Illinois, every single one. The flying line I have 89, every single person was from Illinois. And that's what we got to get back to. We got to get back to keeping the homegrown talent in state. You have to do it. The amount of talent that that, that leaves the, the Illinois boiter, boiters. <laughs> What's a boiter? <laughs> The Illinois borders, the boundaries, the borders of Illinois is ridiculous every year. I mean, think of all the ple- people in the last 10 to 15 years. We're talking Cliff, Big Cliff from Curie. All right. Emeka Okafor from Whitney Young. You know, um, oh, who's the, the guy that they had on? Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. We went to Morgan Park with. And he was on What's Up Cuz, son of a biscuit. I can't think of his name now. But all the all the Chicago talent that leaves the, the state, like if the state of Illinois, the Illinois talent stayed within state, do you realize how many teams we would have good? I mean, DePaul would be, would be would be a hell of a lot more than the the afterthought than they are now. Loyola's still making some moves. Northwestern's making some moves. All right, back to back tournament appearances for Northwestern. I mean, unfortunately, they had to face UConn. Ouch. Ouch. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Um, but then you have Chicago State. You have UIC. Like all these different schools that we'd have. Northern, Southern, Eastern, Western. Illinois State. schools. We could fill all these quality teams. But kids trying to get out of, out of, out of Illinois, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But that's the lineup. Adam Shalafu at 9.30. He'll be joining us in a few moments. Coach T at 10 o'clock talking Bears. Man, I'm fired up. We have a lot to talk about, man. We have a lot. And the NFL has a new a new kickoff rule. What in goodness gracious? It's going to be similar to the XFL. And this is going to be very, uh, now it's very definitive. I mean, I should say very strategic. All right, the new kickoff rule. It's like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> oh, you like the links then, huh? <laughs> yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. It's it's the, the covers team will be at the opposing 40. They're gonna line up what 10 yards apart. And then there was a there was a, was a, uh, a target zone that's gotta hit. I mean, it, it's it's crazy. So it's, here's the thing: you really need just two good blocks. You need two good blocks next to each other. And I wonder if Devin Hester's record will be broken. I wonder that now. Because I'll tell you what, once this rule came out yesterday, I guarantee you every single special teams coach in the country or in the NFL Ran back to the lab and drawn up the craziest shit you can imagine. We're talking about cross blocks, X blocks, and then the NFL is going to have to have to do away with 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 cross blocks. And, uh, trust me, it's it's gonna it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. You're gonna get two guys going this way, one guy pulling basically, and and and, whew, and leaving a, a wide open 
a gaping hole, and, and once they're through, they're through. I could just see special teams coaches just get their, their minds going nuts and all excited like a kid in a candy store. Onside kicks have to be announced. Like, excuse me, I'm going to onside kick now. And you can only do it in the fourth quarter? Like, come on. So the element of surprise, what if you're coming back in the third quarter? You know, you're coming back in the third quarter and all of a sudden it's time. you think it's time. You need to get, you know, one more score to either to get much closer as you go into the fourth or to take the lead. You have all uh, Uncle Mo is on your side. Uncle Mo is momentum for all you non-sports speaking people. Uncle Mo is on your side. And you can't do it in the third quarter. I have to wait till the fourth quarter. Oh, and I have to announce it. Excuse me, sir. Um, just so you know, I'm about to onside kick. I'm going to try to trick you. <sighs> so, yeah, I'm not happy about that, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? NFL has spoken. And since they literally have a patent on Sundays, <laughs> Mondays, Thursdays, <laughs> they can kind of do what they want. Well, listen, we're going to take a quick break. And on the other side of the break, we're going to welcome my man. I hope he's not, I hope he hasn't frozen his ass off because it's cold up there in Fargo. <laughs> Over at KVRR, man. Hope, it's, hope he's, he's staying warm and toasty. My man, Adam Shellifu. We're going to talk a little Bulls basketball on the other side. So don't go anywhere, folks. Let's keep it locked right here. Sean and Maya in the morning on Sports Zone Chicago. Hey, it's your boy, the Superback, Sean Sierra, and be sure to follow Sports Zone Chicago on all social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and our Roku channel. You can find us at Sports Zone Chicago, and on Twitter, we are at Sports Zone Shy. Also, be sure to download our mobile app so you can take Sports Zone Chicago with you on the go. Time out. How are you feeling right now? Happy? Excited? Angry? Overwhelmed? One of the best things you can do for your mind health is to name what you're feeling. It can sharpen your awareness and help you talk about your feelings with someone you trust. Here are three questions to ask yourself. Where are your thoughts right now? In the past, the present, the future? Do you notice any sensations in your body? Is your heart beating fast? Is there a flutter in your stomach? Or are you fully relaxed? What do you need right now? Time with others? Time to yourself? Remember, there's power in this awareness. So find ways to identify what you're feeling today. Hi, guys. Hey. Hi, Megan. Hey, Jessica. Megan, you're a tramp. Brian Fitch told me you guys made out. Everybody knows. He said your breath smells like garbage. And he almost puked. He says you're your most desperate girl he knows, besides your mom. How many boyfriends does she have anyway? Lots. Your makeup makes you look like a clown. That zit is huge, zit face. But what you doing? I'm playing with cars. Cars? Can you show me what a car does? Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. First of all, this is a school zone. So you need to put down your cell phone, stop texting, and let's get to driving. Now you're coming up to a stop sign, right? You need to slow down and stop before you hit that Y line. I want you to look left, right, left. You don't want to get hit by a car going on your left. And to your right to make sure you don't get sideswiped by a guy coming from your right. You're coming, you're coming, you're coming, and you see a crosswalk. You better slow your horses down because the number one rule of driving is always yield to pedestrians. Now stop, pull over, and you are done driving. Gosh, what do they teach you kids in school nowadays? To Bedard, top of the left circle, fed it through Kershev to the high slot, Jones fires, he scores! 
five players on the ice for two minutes and 47 seconds. But when you've got in the offensive zone and you've got puck possession, not nearly as exhausting. And through the seam, you can see a very tired group of Calgary Flames right there. And no effort to be able to block that shot. The goaltenders made a number of good saves. It actually ricocheted off the first forward. Slagger had to Anderson on a two-on-one break over the line. To Dickinson, shoots, he scores! He made the play on the left side there with the backhand play off the boards. Anderson's got it on the left. He's a right-hand shot. He waits for as long as he could possibly wait. The defense was in the middle. The pass is perfect by Anderson. And this one timer beats the goalie cleanly to the left side. Uh, but the bottom line is for Landon Slaggart, his first National Hockey League point, and he'll be taking that puck home. <laughs> Welcome back to Sean and Maya in the morning on Sports Zone Chicago. Those clips courtesy of NBC Sports Chicago. Those are the Blackhawks. Yeah, baby. What a 3-1 win over hockey, baby. <laughs> oh, do I remember those times? <laughs> Those clips courtesy of NBC Sports Chicago as our Blackhawks beat the Calgary Flames 3-1 to uh, last night at the UC. Um, my first guest today is a good friend of the program. He's up there hopefully not freezing his tushy off, speaking of the tush push in the NFL. Uh, he works for KBRR. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at Fargo Foo, it's F-O-U-X. Guys, let's welcome back to Sean and Maya. Adam Shalafu. Adam, what's up, Papa? How are you? Oh, you know, it's kind of mild winter. We got a last second uh, snowstorm, but before that, not too bad. Not too bad. Kind of just like a Chicago winter, a bearable winter, but, uh, you know, it, it got us eventually. But I'm good. I'm good. Having a good time. Uh, just got done with the March Madness of the high school hoops here. And, uh, yeah, excited to be here talking some bowls. So am I. Um, unfortunately, the Bulls had a piss poor performance the other day, losing to the worst team in the world. Uh, yeah, the Jordan Poole led Washington Wizards. Um, give me your thoughts on that. You know, this they had the worst record in, in basketball. However, since they had the new head coach, they had a two game winning streak going into that game, and they got and they were they had kind of turned their season around. I granted too a little too little too much too little too late. But it's always it's always how you finish a season, and they were coming in pretty confident with that little two game winning streak. Give me your thoughts on 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 that game, and if the Bulls, if you feel the Bulls may have taken them for granted, I think they did take them for granted because you know the Bulls are uh, a better team than the Wizards. Uh, gambling is illegal here, but I can still text my father and say, <laughs> "Here's what I would do." And I texted him, hey, the Bulls are down early against the Wizards and, uh, you know, probably a good idea to take the Bulls' money line. I'm glad he didn't see that till later. The reason I'm bringing this up is because you can look at some of the trends the Bulls have had all season where they're playing this kind of catch-up. And uh, they'll usually come back and eventually beat a bad team. Uh, there was a, a point in the year uh, against the Timberwolves where I text them and I, I see a lot of wolves up here. And I'm like, hey, the wolves are uh, good at blowing leads and the bulls are good at coming back, right? Yeah. Uh, so perfect example there. But I look at that Wizards game and you're coming out flat. And as you mentioned, the Wizards have been a little bit better lately, but you don't have Tyus Jones and you don't have Denny Avija. And so you're playing the worst team in the NBA without two of their best players. And you start by being down 15 to zero. That's not it, a good way to start a game. Yeah. I mean, this has got to be rock bottom for this iteration. And I think what's most frustrating about this whole season, these, you know, we've, we've talked about it till we're blue in the face about how uh, the Lonzo ball injury changed the complexion of the team. But now, even if he comes back, everybody's older, it's a different team than the team he left. And, it's not working. It's not working. Like it's, it's very gimmicky. We've seen it in flashes. Uh, you know, the injury to Levine certainly um, was a nail in the tire and it's a team that's hoping that they don't slide out of the play in situation right now, instead of a team we hoped was going to kind of be in that playoff spot. Uh, I mean, there's some bright spots. We've really seen Kobe white emerge into the player we hoped he would this year. And um, 
But yeah, I mean, it's like you can't be losing to the Wizards. And I think some of the officiating, that's a different story. Uh, <laughs> at whole the end of the game animal. Uh, but also the last, the, the two plays at the end of the game that really ticked me off was uh, there was a block that was called a charge on Caruso. I don't know if a charge is the correct term there, but he ran into the defender. The defender is still moving his feet. I don't think he had the ball, though. But it was it's a foul on Washington regardless. Um, and then, so Washington gets an extra chance there where the bulls had a chance to make a really key stop instead of going down three points, I believe it was. And then, uh, the final seconds of the game, he inbounded to DeMar DeRozan. And I understand that DeMar's made a lot of clutch shots. And after looking at the play from a different angle maybe the pass wasn't there so I'll, I'll put that out there give him the benefit of the doubt to some degree but watching that in live action I see Kobe White streaking down the sideline he's going to have a better look yeah. finally to get the ball to Kobe White who's not having to you know hoist a shot from just outside the half court line like this isn't how you. This isn't a formula for success. Kobe White, we've seen him make shots from the parking lot all season long. Give him a chance to be the hero. And so I, I, I but also give too. him a, give him a chance to. It's I think it's his time. I think he's earned that now. I think you know Demar was the closer back then. I think Demar right. can still do it. But I think it's also time that you that you pass the baton and let Kobe start trying to win some games, get get some game winning shots. I think it's I think he's earned that. I think he's with his play and his development of the last few years since he's been here. I think he's earned it. I, I completely agree. And at this point, it's like, how much longer is Demar Derozan going to be in the league? Not just I mean, like maybe a two few more years more with years. the Bulls. <laughs> yeah, let alone with the Bulls, but like the, the guy's getting older. And at, the, at this point, like, the Bulls need to focus on building for the future, whatever that looks like. It, and there's a lot of different, like, versions of that. And I, I, we texted last night. I said, like, what do you want to talk about? And, you know, when you mentioned the Bulls' future, I realized that the answers are going to be based on what do you want, like, in particular. Because there's, there's a, a world where the Bulls are – do it one way because they're trying to make the playoffs next year. And then there's a world where they do it another way because they're trying to win a championship a few years later. But those aren't the same thing because right now it's, it's a purgatory team. And even if best case scenario, Lonzo Ball comes back, he's somehow magically healed by the medical whiz and he's just yeah, ready the magic to go. Johnson doctors. Oh, yeah. I mean, they got a <laughs> dead guy's cartilage in this guy's knee. And I think it's unrealistic for any Chicago's Bulls fan to be like, well, you know, the they, they took the that knee ligament out of that corpse and they sl slug it in there. So he's probably going to be Magic Johnson when he comes back. He's going to be amazing. We're going to be as good as we were before. That's unrealistic. You got to just send the Magic Johnson's doctors. Here. Just send yeah, the Magic your, Johnson's your doctors, guard, bro. Who you're playing a lot of money to for a guy with a dead guy's knee. And so you take the dead guy's knee and say, hey, kid, get out on the floor and be as good as you were three years ago. It's going to be tough. Let's say it does happen, though. Then you're still looking at a team that isn't as good as the rest of the East. And let's talk about tonight's game and the matchup they have. The Indiana Pacers, they just fixed all their issues by adding Pascal Siakam, and they are now a super fast, super long, super athletic team that can spray from three. And the Bulls are going to have to play them all the time, and they're not going to be able to match up because this is a team that isn't just quick. The, the bulls are like my girlfriend's cat. Very small, kind of cute, sneaks out from behind the couch and bites your ankles. But the problem is I'm 190 pounds, and the bulls are going to run into teams that are 190 pounds to their eight-pound, hey, well, we got a bunch of really good guards. Well, that's really cute. You know, you got two slow centers. You can't match up with the rest of the league, and you're not really scaring anyone. You got your moments where, like, did you see that cat? That was – that, I didn't like that sound. That wasn't good. That's teams to the rest of the league. We are that house cat. 
And we need to be a panther. We need to be a puma, a tiger, something. We got to lurk in the high grass. We got to hunt. And right now, we're just a house cat. We're quick. But, like, do we even have front claws? I don't know. <laughs> Guys, we're joined by Adam Shalafu <laughs> from KBRR up there in, in North Dakota. <laughs> He's the host of the. He's back. He's bringing it back to running with the Bulls podcast. And we're fired up about that to hear, hear, hear him talking Bulls. You hear him talking to hear it with us today on Sean and my in the morning on Sports Zone Chicago. So what do you what do you really uh <laughs> like my man Cornelius says, that's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> so what what do you where do we go from here? I mean, is this Billy's fault? Is he on the hot seat? Is is it uh Car- Connor Showis's fault because he's the one who's buying the groceries? Is it a combination of both of them? What the hell can the, can can the Bulls do to be relevant? I mean, being in you know the thing that I that really bugged me was when he did the interview, and all he kept saying, I'm talking about our terms, Connor Chauvis, was all he kept saying was, "We are competitive. We are competitive. We are competitive." But and yeah, you're making the play in, but we don't want that play in nonsense. We want playoffs. Playoffs, all right. I, we want that. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I feel like the competitor in me because I remember in college when uh, the Sixers were in the tank thing, and I used to get like heated about it because I told my friends who were all about like, "Oh, they're brilliant." I'm like, "No, they're stupid." You don't like. There's no integrity in trying to be bad, and it, and it's bad for your culture. And you look, and sometimes being bad doesn't even make you good. Like. The Sixers are a great example of why not to tank. They whiffed on just about every pick except Joel Embiid. A lot of guys were supposed to be sure thing, right? And so you don't want to get into, in my opinion, a point where you are going to, like, just not compete. And and it's also not a way to keep the players who want to, like, can you imagine being Kobe White? And then, you know, you're trying to get the bag, but they're also like, hey, we're going to suck for the next, like, four years, dude. <laughs> and you're like, I think I might uh, go to Charlotte because at least, you know, that's where I'm from and they might pay me more. You know, I don't think that's the answer, but I think where you go from here, who to blame, all those questions, you can't blame Acme for, and you know, that's Eversley and Karnasovis, you can't blame them for not wanting to get worse, right? Like, if they would have had to make moves at the deadline, not just the year, but the the year before, I feel like it just makes them worse. And they didn't want to do that. But going into this offseason, I think you have to ask yourself some really tough questions. Like, DeMar DeRozan is still a really good player. And, And so that's not the issue I have with DeMar, but, you know, checking his age right now, yeah, he's 34 years old. It's time to get better value and create more flexibility with where you can spend your money. You know, like Levine's got more years left on his deal, but I would like the Bulls to try to kind of take a note out of what the Bears are doing. Like, look at what the Bears – They've done in free agency, and it's not just about – they've made some big, sexy splashes, don't get me wrong, but it's about getting good value. And they need to – It's. it would be great if they could magically get some home run free agent, but the fact of the matter is that there's just not really too many guys out there next season as far as, like, going to completely move the needle, Uh, like – you know, Tyrese Maxey, I think, would wind up going back to Philly. And you don't need a guard. You already got a 1,000 guards. LeBron James is a 1,000 years old. You know, we'll see what happens. I think Pascal Siakam, good chance he stays in Indiana with how good of a fit he's been. OG Ananobi. Um, but you get way down there and you start thinking about guys like uh, Precious Achua, you know, who, who's been really, really nice for the New York Knicks. Um in that power forward spot, you start thinking uh, maybe a guy like Miles Bridges, you know, you, you want to monitor the Bruce Brown situation. Uh, Buddy Heald might be an interesting guy, but I think that this team as a whole needs to change the construction 
uh, of their roster in a way that allows them to play a more balanced game of basketball and stop being that that house cat. And all the jokes aside with the house cat, right? Like the reason I'm making this comparison is because it's either you have Drummond or Vucevic out there and then like literally Alex Caruso is your power for it at times. And he does good at it. It's not a knock on Caruso, but, but he's six, five. <laughs> yeah. Like he's, he's six, five. And that's another reason I, at this point I'll be on record. I would prefer DeMar leaves because you're going to, he's, he's at 28 mil this year. That's going to take a, a, a ton of cap. I'd rather have Caruso out there, even if it, it obviously is going to make you a lot worse offensively, but you know, it, it's time to start leaning more on Kobe White. Zach Levine is going to come back, and this whole, hey, let's have, like, one center. And, and sometimes it's got even clunkier because they don't have a true power forward. And so then you put DeRo or I'm sorry, um, Drummond and Vucevic out there together, and then it's like, okay, now we have these two seven-footers, but we can't really move. And then when you have uh, Vucevic or Drummond out there, it's like, hey, we got these two really big guys, but no one else can rebound. You know, like it, it's one d- dimensional. And um, you look at a team like the Pacers and you got Miles Turner, one of the best shot blockers in the league. He, he's seven foot. He, he's gotten a lot better at rebound. He also shoots really well from three. And then you have Siakam, who can pretty much guard two through five you know, a switchable defender and a guy who's going to be able to attack the rim, the guy, a guy who's going to be able to make really good passes, the guy who's going to be a really smart defender, championship pedigree. We saw what he did with the Raptors being their second best player. And then uh, you obviously have the brilliance of uh, Tyrese Halliburton. You got Benedict Mantherin. Uh, you have these skilled wings in the whole team can run and has an identity. That's why I think the Pacers could be a real dark horse but you don't have to have that like super duper star talent. I think Halliburton, you could make an argument is the best point guard in the NBA right now. So I don't want to like call them too much of a dark horse. Like we we should take them very seriously, Mm -hmm. but you look at the way that team's constructed and you can do a lot of things with that team. You look at the way the bulls are constructed in contrast and you can't do much. And how do you like, I know we're getting more and more positionless as basketball has evolved, but this isn't what that means. It doesn't mean that, oh, well, it doesn't matter what positions you put out there because like DeMar DeRozan has been listed as a shooting guard most of his career, and he's our go-to power forward. Alex Caruso has been a point guard shooting guard his whole career. He's sometimes in there at power forward. Kobe White, I like we're seeing him one through three. We're tiny. We're tiny. In, in what – how the hell are we going to get through the bucks? If we're talking about like actually trying to compete for a championship, we have to beat our own division. We have to beat bam out of bio. When we go down and face Jimmy Butler and the Miami heat, we can't have every team that we would go through be a matchup nightmare for us because we're nothing but guards and a center with no matter what rotation is. They're predictable. They're not good. It, it, it's really got to change. And unfortunately it's not going to be a one year project. Even if Lonzo ball comes back and he's perfect, he's somehow better than four. Like he's just another guard and you got all these long jab uh, log jam guard positions. It's time to start looking at what kind of value can get, you get on a guy like Gordon Hayward next year, who can actually play some power forward pass the rock. Is he a perfect player? No, but you got to kind of look at like, what kind of bridge players can we get with value or do we completely blow it up and try to just like get a clean slate? Cause I don't want them blowing it up with intention to tank. Cause I don't think there's any integrity of, about that. But if you blow it up in the way that like, Hey, let's just, it's, it, I remember I was in art class. I was, I was painting something in sophomore year in high school. And I'm like, this sucks. So I got a new piece of paper. <laughs> Do the Bulls need to get a new piece of paper? You know, I didn't trade all my all, all my paints in. I just said, hey, it's time to start drawing something else because that sucked. Like, it might be time to start drawing something else. Guys, we're joined by Adam Shalafu, host of the uh, 
soon to be revived, running with the Bulls. He's up in Fargo and KVRR. Talking Bulls basketball with your boy here on Sean and Maya in the morning on Sports Zone Chicago. What what situation? Well, let's talk about talk about something good <laughs> at this team. The emergence of Kobe White and and actually the development of Io have been Kobe White a little more so, but I still see Io his I see his development. It hasn't been as great as Kobe's, but I still see it. Why do you think those two have been able to? develop and take bigger step steps forward when Patrick Williams hasn't been able to do, has been able to take that step. I can't figure it out with Patrick Williams. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where he shot up the draft boards going back. Cause I mean, he didn't even start at Florida state, right. you know? Yeah. And so like, I just don't know if he was ever going to be the guy we thought he was going to be. We've seen it in flashes, but at this point I'm, I'm wondering if, what the deal is, but I, I think that a uh, a big commonality and it's it's another reason to get rid of Demar Derozan at this point is opportunity provides growth. You know what I mean, or it facilitates growth rather. Rather, and so when did Kobe White break out? Well, it was like it was kind of when Levine went down. You know, uh, when he got to like. And it does create sink or swim moments. Like there, no basketball player is just going to, you know, I guess even you look at like guys like Luka Doncic, but they're kind of the exception. The guy who just comes in and they're amazing. Like there's some failure on the road to success, but I don't think that the Bulls young players have been getting the opportunity to cut their teeth with some of that uh, failure frankly. And if they do, sometimes you got to give them a little bit of a longer leash and realize that it's, it's not always going to work right away, but also it gives the front office an opportunity to be like, okay, well, we gave him a chance. You know, he didn't pan out, but we've seen a lot of guys leave the building and have more success elsewhere. And that's why I would prefer to keep Patrick Williams around if it's Patrick Williams or DeMar DeRozan, because I mean, I, I think it's apples and oranges to some degree, but pulling up the salaries right now, you know, Patrick Williams becomes a restricted free agent this year. If he wants anywhere close to like, you know, 30 million, you can't do it. But if you can find him on something that's reasonable for him, I think it would be great to bring him back. Um, but he's 22 years old. I, I mean, I remember not that I'm a professional athlete. Like I remember my muscles didn't stop developing until I was 26. Like we, we forget that sometimes like these, sometimes these guys are literally children. When they get brought to the NBA, like you're 19, like your body's got to develop. Look what happened to Markkanen once he got a little stronger. And and that's just like developing his body. You know, I I think a great example is let's go in the way back machine and remember that Tyson Chandler was a small forward on the roster his first year, similarly to what uh, the Minnesota Timberwolves with Kevin Garnett. And he wasn't that strong. He didn't pull down that many rebounds. We all know who Tyson Chandler turned into, you know, a a perennial defensive player of the year kind of guy. And I think that there's a level of patience we need to have with development. Uh, I think what makes it so tricky is with these kids coming out so young, it's like you better be friggin' good by 22. Otherwise, (sighs) and then the next team gets the guy who clicks. And so maybe that's something the Bulls can keep in mind too. Is like, all right, well, who can we kind of give a, a second chance at life here? Um, that's struggling somewhere else. Yeah, that. but I, I look at Patrick Williams. It's like, is he impressed me? No. Is he twenty two? Yeah. Could he get better? Yeah. Is he going to get better with Demar Derozan there? No. And so, like, you need to like give these guys an opportunity to be better. And even if next year, I would prefer it. Like, I always want to make the playoffs, man. I love watching the Bulls make the playoffs, watching those games, play in. I'll take it, whatever. Yeah, Post- I'll have to take it, yeah. You know, but I'm looking at next year and, like, we got to kind of break this cycle. And if that means being down around 11 or 12 in the East, but 
development from Patrick Williams and Kobe White makes his first all-star game. Some stuff like that happens. I do think they're going to be inevitably better with Levine, and I don't think that he's necessarily going to go anywhere because look what happened when they tried to trade him. The, the value wasn't there. But even like Levine, he's got a lot of good years left in him. And like, give, What is he, only 28? Uh, yeah, I mean, let me uh, let me take a check on that. Yeah, he's twenty eight. You know, like it's not like he's about to retire. You know, get get some good Levine prime years and see what happens with tomorrow. Does that make Levine better? You know, but it's time to like break up the like the car you keep taking to the mechanic at this point. You know, he's putting it together with 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 the electric tape. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like you got holding it together. Yeah. I, I feel you. It's like we, it's not working the DeMar Levine. Like it, we don't know what it would have looked like with Lonzo ball. Cause it was such a great rebounder out of, the, out of the backcourt where like maybe something like that. And he could guard, you know, one through three and it was looking yeah. like a small ball league, but we're not really there anymore. And teams are getting big again and the pendulum starting to swing the other way. And, we have a team that at its best isn't built to compete for anything serious. And so I think that's the operative phrase there, <clears throat> Adam, see anything serious. They're built to compete. They're built yeah. to compete with Trout with getting in and staying in the, in the play in. And, you know, when, when they asked Arturis Karnaschovas if they thought his, his bosses were satisfied with his work, he didn't hesitate and said, yeah. And we'll know, we'll know shit. Cause you keep the, you, you keep us dangling. All right, you keep us you 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 keep us teetering near the play in or play. And like you said, Bulls fans they want playoffs. I mean, hell, how 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 long were we spoiled when we went to the playoffs? <clears throat> it's like eighty seven through shit when Jordan retired. So eighty seven yeah. through like ninety eight. We're talking twelve, thirteen seasons. It's playoffs. Like it's not a matter of if we're in the playoffs. It's a matter of we're are we gonna have not in our division. Are we gonna be number one in the East? That was the only issue. What day's the parade? You know? <laughs> yeah. For all intents and purposes, yeah. And now we're like, you know, we, we were starved for so long with the Ron Mercers and, and those things. And now we're just, you know, we got the Derrick Rose thing, and then we went back down. I mean, you talk about ebb and flow, and now we're, we're in a playoff. We're, we're excited to be in there, we're, and our standards are so low because we've been, we've been starved with, you know, for good basketball. What do you think? What, what's one move? Because uh, Demar's a free agent, what's one move that you want to see? Realistic, uh, kind of keep it close to realistic. But what's one move you want to see the Bulls make in the offseason? Like as far as our free agency goes, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, or trade for or something. Okay, um, I think Gordon Hayward would make a lot of sense. Uh, He's had injury problems throughout his career, but if you can get 20 to 25 good minutes out of a guy who's uh, a 6'8", can play, you know, start at power forward or start at small forward, and, and that's your piece instead of uh, DeMar DeRozan, I think it makes you a little bit better of a rebounding team, and I think it also allows some of the other guys to uh, get a little more playmaking experience. Um, I think that realistically, too, he's not about to command the bag that he would have in the past. Uh, Caleb Martin could be a really nice guy. Uh, he's got a player option with Miami. I expect him to uh, stick around, frankly. Um, I really like Precious Achua. Um, the dude just works. The dude, like, he, he's killing it with Tom Thibodeau right now. And the reason is because, like, we all remember what Tom Thibodeau does right he's he's got players who you know want to run through a brick wall and they they play their tail off and um he's really thriving a guy who gets rebounds and blocks and a lot of a lot more uh fleet of foot he can knock down some threes not going to be in a three-point shooting contest but a guy like that and um who can give you some run at the the power forward or the center position and uh, let me give you one more is uh, Gary Trent Jr. So uh, Gary Trent Sr., if you remember him back in the day, uh, his son. But, you know, 11 and a half points per game, 41% from three. And it's, it's about value. And so uh, I want value and 
I know notice like besides Gary Trent Jr., who's more of a, a shooting guard, but I think he could play, you know, some small forward. Uh I named a bunch of forwards, you know, like start making this roster a little bit more conventional and versatile where like, I know it's, this is a stupid example, but I'm going to give it anyway. But sometimes I play uh 2k, uh, the basketball video game and I'll, I'll play people online. And sometimes I like to play with the bulls. The reason I, don't win with the bulls is because when I usually win in, in 2k against people, it's not because I'm great at video games. I'm 32 years old. I'm too old for that shit, but I'm smarter than them. I'm, I, I know how to play the chess game that is basketball, but I don't know what the hell to do, you know, because we got nothing but guards. And so I'm getting killed on the glass. I don't know what to do about it. You know, like, okay, well, I can I can just try to outrun them, and then everybody's tired. And I feel like you can apply that to reality where it's like they just don't have the pieces in place. And so, like, I don't want them to make some big, sexy move. And here's the, the secret carrot I've been dangling, all right? I think the Bulls could get Zion Williamson someday. It, like – I, I, I'm going I'm to double check his contract, but I want to say he comes out summer of 2025. But like, don't spend all this money this year if that's going to mean not being able to pay somebody who want a better free agency class uh, does come up. Okay, that's. I'm sorry, I, I was off on that. They they did uh, ink him up a little bit long long term. So screw Zion. He'll, he would have been great, but like someone like that, you know what I mean? Like make, take a big swing. It's somebody, it, it's probably have to be 2025 because uh, what I use is uh spotrack.com. You know, I look at the, the um, salaries there and then I'll look at like, usually hoops hype has like a top available free agents. And I look at the the list on hoops hype and it's like LeBron James and Paul George, you know, the, are going to be the best free agents. Like, neither of those make any sense for us right now. No. And no. so like, you don't want to make a move that doesn't make sense for you. It's better to be patient, but like start laying the foundation. Um, I know I, I mentioned it earlier, but like, honestly, look at the bears blueprint. It is apples and oranges to some degrees because it's a different sport, but like it doesn't like the, the bears did a three year rebuild and it's more realistic to think like, Hey, we can get this turned around like in two or three years than it is to say the bulls are going to compete for a championship next season. But if you start getting the right guys in place, and if you start developing your young talent, and then when the right free agent does come along, then you take a big swing, but you got to make sure that you have cap flexibility. And that means letting go of DeMar DeRozan. Uh, it, it might mean letting go of uh, Nikola Vucevic. And it might be mean being a little bit worse, but we look at some of the moves, and I feel like hindsight's twenty twenty. But the Bulls lost the Vucevic trade. I hate to say it. Um, one more guy I'll throw out there because they got Franz Wagner out of that man. That that hurts. That hurts. Uh, but Mo Wagner is going to be a free agent this summer. He'd be a really nice get for the for the Chicago Bulls. More guys to put in the front court more guys to, you know, develop. And then, like I said, whoever that guy is, when he becomes available to throw the bag at, say, all right, you're the missing piece, be in a position to make that move. Don't be tied up to, you know, at the time, what's it going to be, 35, 36-year-old DeMar DeRozan? That's not smart. So I want them to be more cognizant of the future. I want to keep the competitive mindset of, uh, you know, let's try to stay competitive, like let's not tank, but be aware of the fact that this version of the Chicago Bulls isn't that good <laughs> and that the ultimate championship goal isn't going to be achieved with this roster. And so it, it started, we need to, what I want the Bulls to do quite simply is just be more realistic and uh, 
start acting accordingly as they ask themselves and reflect this summer, like, what do we want to do? Do we want to be a team competing for the play-in again? Or do we want a team that is hopefully going to get us to a point where we can start to build for a championship in, I don't know, 2028? You know, I, I think that's – because this ain't it. This is just not it. Oh, man. Adam, great stuff, buddy. I appreciate it. Do me a favor, though. Let everyone know where they can find you and your work online. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, always a pleasure being here, man. Uh, at Fargo Foo, and as you uh, teased out, um, running with the Bulls will be coming back. Uh, I'll, I'll just briefly explain here. You know, pandemic kind of took us out of our rhythm. I have a new co-host who will be coming in. Uh, I'm not going to uh, release any names just yet, but it was important that it was another Radio to Paul alumni. And uh, that's where, you know, I kind of cut my teeth in, in the podcasting game and everything. So it's going to be another Radio to Paul alumni, a guy who has archival knowledge of the Chicago Bulls. This guy can tell you what shoes and socks Tom Borowinkle wore. And uh, he's going to be a great fit for us. Uh, we're really excited. Uh, this kid is uh, finishing up. Uh, law school right now and I told him hey man get that done um, but obviously very intelligent if he's in law school right now so um, we're, we're looking at the summer and looking at to kind of get started um, with the off season and then hopefully we just keep on running, uh, on running. And, and we will uh, provide I'll provide all those links on social uh, when the time comes uh, but much like the Bulls it's about doing it the right way and so um but yeah, keep keep an eye out. I'm always tweeting bull stuff. I'm always trying to keep an eye on stuff, and I'm very locked in on the Bears right now. Very interested about the Chicago Bears. So a lot of Chicago. Boy, that's that's a whole another conversation, man. Because that's that's that. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not happy with it. Um, I mean, I trust polls, but it doesn't mean I can't be critical of what he's done. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't agree with it. Uh, I get the financial aspect that he talked about. But it, it still would. I don't know how much difference it would have been keeping uh, our former quarterback. And yeah, it's, it's he's a little more likable, Sean. So, he's it's a little it's more not likeable. just that. It's not just that. But my my here's before I let you go. Here's the thing that I I said, and everyone always talks about chase greatness. You know, one of the guys. Well, let's chase greatness, all right? And blah 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 blah. And I, and I, I get that. I'm not. You know, he's. I'm not averse to that. But my question is, here's the thing that people don't understand, that there's chemistry in a locker room, mm -hmm. okay? There's chemistry, and it's not always based on talent or production. And my, my example was this. When the Bears won their Super Bowl, okay, and when they made their Super Bowl appearance in 06, or January of 07, was Jim McMahon or Rex Grossman, were they the best quarterback in the NFL at that time? No. Not even close. Not even close, okay? But what was Jim McMahon? Jim McMahon was a leader of men. Yeah. Jim McMahon was a uh, was a dude who um, who commanded the respect of his teammates and pulled the best out of his teammates, and that's what that's what we had. We had the guy. We had the leader, and but and truth be told, we also had a quarterback who if. He would have been managed, could be a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. And mm -hmm. a top 10 quarterback with what they have now, it, it's looking like super. It's deep. In, it's pretty much this way. Where we're, we'd be vying for an NFC title game every year in the near future. All right. Whether we get there or not, okay, we get there, we get to the Super Bowl or not. My, that would be the goal would be to get to the NFC championship game because at that point, anything can happen. So, well, if you want to have me on for some Bears talk for a little curveball sometime, I'll stay ready because I, I don't want to take up any more of your time because I could talk about this one for the next two hours. Yeah, you and me both, bro. But, uh, hey, I appreciate it, and uh, we will talk soon. I will have you on. Maybe next week we'll do some Bears talk because I was not happy. Um, it, it, it's, it's interesting how, you know, people – I don't know. It, it was surprising because some people who said, well, you know, I, uh, you know, they, they didn't know football. But I was like, why would you, you know, you're, you're overlooking that one big thing. And that's the, the leader of men part. 
Yeah. You know, that's that's the thing. So, you know, anyway, we'll we'll talk about it another time. Hey buddy, thanks a lot. Great stuff. Thank I gotta you. hop. But uh we will talk soon, buddy. We'll talk uh have a happy Easter on Sunday. I didn't realize Sunday was Easter. Sure is. Happy Easter and uh thank you for having me on. We'll we'll talk soon. All right, buddy. Thank you. Bye now. Guys, that's Adam Shalafu talking bulls with your boy. We gotta take a quick break on the other side of the break. He's ready to roll. My man, Coach T, is going to join us for some Bears talk. So, man, don't go anywhere, folks. Coach T up next. Keep it locked right here. Sean and Maya in the morning on Sports Zone Chicago. For every generation, it has started with the call to serve. Discovering the purpose and the belonging earned with the title. Learning to dig deep and push through adversity together. Defending our nation and its people. It is a life of great worth and reward. But Marines are never really finished serving. Their commitment comes full circle, visible in communities across our country. This is Semper Fidelis, always faithful, always Marine, marking a path for the next generation. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Search Ready Kids at nyc.gov or call 311. Like when RG3 comes out. Mm-hmm. You heard it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what are your, what are, like, don't you think, like, your particular Bears feels different than maybe the previous Bears? Like, that's how we feel outside looking yeah, in. It's yep. like, hey, this uh, is a brand new building almost. Does it feel like that in there? And obviously you weren't there beforehand, but does it feel like you and Eberflus' culture is kind Because of, at the end of the last season, right. it feels like, okay, the culture is kind of settling in, team settling in. You guys feel that, obviously? Yeah, that, it, it pisses me off a little bit, to be honest with you, because we were hired to break a cycle. Um, the same thing when I was in Kansas City. Uh, Coach Reed, all of us were brought there to break a cycle. And we did. And no one talks about those days anymore. It's all about what they are right now. So I really believe we're about to break this cycle and get this this city in in a really good situation and and win a a lot of games. Um, So the past is the past. Like I don't worry about that at all. It's about where we're going. Okay. Well, a lot of people had a similar reaction to you. Welcome back to Sean and Maya in the morning on Sports Zone Chicago. Those clips courtesy of ESPN. Uh, That was Bears general manager Ryan Poles. All right. On the Pat McAfee show. Uh, he was referring to the comments uh, made by RG3, who said, you know, basically, Caleb, you know, tell the Bears don't draft them and, you know, because of the situation before. And, uh, you know, they their history of not developing quarterbacks runs very deep. Um, and I, I got a couple questions about that, though. You know, Ryan Paul said one thing that was, I was like, wait a minute. Okay. You know, he's talking about, he says, we're here to break a cycle. Okay. I get it. Uh, But he didn't. So you got a, you're drafting a new quarterback with a a lame duck coach or a coach who's going to be on the hot seat. Because, you know, in my opinion, this was the year. All right. Polls had to talk to 
Eberflus before he hired him saying, hey, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to break this thing down your first year. Your second, I'm going to start rebuilding it your second year. Maybe get a key, a, key, a couple key free agents. We'll build the D. I'm going to break the defense down. And that's going to hurt. And we'll, we'll, we'll rebuild that. And then we'll get to the offense as best we can. So you take the heat for 23, uh, you know, and once we get help on the offense and start developing this offense, I think 24 is when we can start evaluating you. Okay. So I think that's why he kept the job, his job. So now I think we get to truly, truly start evaluating Coach Eberflus. But he's going to have a new quarterback. Well, this is the same thing that's happened before with Justin, with Mitch. The difference is, the difference is, the, this is going to be the first time that they're getting in, they're getting experienced offensive and offensive staff and experienced offensive staff. So saying Shane Waldron has called plays before he's helped develop quarterbacks. All right. Perry Joseph. Um, same thing as a quarterback coach. How even Thomas Brown was a, an offensive coordinator. He's our passing game coordinator. So we're getting guys, now we are getting guys who are experienced at doing this. You know, and so, yes, he perpetuated the cycle, but he did it a little differently. Will it work? I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. And we're going to see because I don't think he, I don't think he, he did right by Justin. And I get what he said, you know, about the financial aspect of it. Okay. I do think it's a, a, a matter of timing. Don't get me wrong. Timing is everything. Timing is everything. Okay. I think, I think what could have been done. It's say, hey, listen, we're we're gonna pick up your fifth year option, and then we're gonna we're gonna work on an extension. Um, it's not gonna be in the fifty million dollar range, okay? If it, you know what, even if it's a two year extension, all right, or a one year extension at from twenty five, twenty seven, even thirty, what the hell? And if he play well, all right, then we'll talk. But at that point, it buys you time. You stick with the guy. Because now that you've built up this, you've built this thing up to where it's um, it's going to be, you would have to intentionally try to fail with the wide receivers, with the added defensive help, with the added depth in the offensive line, with, which is to me is the most important thing, with the person who can develop quarterbacks, who can call plays and adjust plays to situations and to personnel. And now he's, and I know it's 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 a moot point, but I still, when some people say, you know, I heard some people who wanted to make that argument. Well, he did he did right by Justin. I'm like, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. But again, it's timing. It's remember, remember when Jake Arrieta at the end of 15, the end of 16, at the end of six, the end of 15 and beginning of 2016 was damn near untouchable for the Cubs. Had he been a free agent at the end of 2016? He would have gotten $200 million, but he had one year left on his contract. He ended up only, only, I'm sure he's in the welfare line because he only made what, $75 million. So had his contract ended after the 2000, either 2015 season or the 2016 season, he would have had 200 million. So it's timing. So I get it, but it, it's still a tough pill to swallow. My next guest is a good friend of the program. And he's, uh, man, he's doing phenomenal, phenomenal stuff with his podcast, Chicago Bears 360. And uh, I want to get his take on it. All right. You can find him on Twitter at, and it's, it's a tough, it's a long one, at Bears 360 underscore Coach T. So let's bring him on, our boy, Coach T. Coach T, what's up, Papa? How yeah, you doing? What's up, son? How's things going, man? Feel like it's been forever. 
It has been, man. Well, you well, you know what? Because you've been doing a podcast like two times a day, dog. It feels like it. <laughs> Everybody's hollering at Coach T. Coach T, come on my podcast. Coach T, can I get on your podcast? You know, hey, he's definitely been busy <laughs> for sure. Uh, but grateful, man, because doors are opening, man. The platform is growing, so no complaints. Hey, and I'm telling man. you, bro, from from Jump Street, I am so happy for you. Yeah, uh, so proud of you. And I remember when you first started, man, you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this kind of part time because I still want to get in coaching. And I'm and in the back of my mind, I'm like, I was like, all right. I'm like, but you got you got a lot of good content, man. Do, you know, and, and people like to see film. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, and you break it down. I'm like, it's, it might not be just a part time. I'm thinking in my head. It might not just be a part time <laughs> thing, but all right, we'll, we'll go with that for now. And it's really hey, taken man. off. And I'm really happy. Again, I, I couldn't be more happy for you. I couldn't be more proud of you. You know, because it's there's no competition, bro. It's you know what? It's, right, it's it's. I'm proud of all my people who are doing this, especially my wow. my, my people of color who are doing this, and getting in this space and providing a different perspective yeah, for yeah. people. A, a couple things already when you say that. First of all, people don't know. Um, it's it's for 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 the game, the DIY media game, the media game. First off, people don't understand the amount of work that goes into it. Um. It's a lot you got to put into it if you want to be successful at it. And then the other part of that, you know this, Sean, you don't get a whole lot of help. So I got to give you a flyer because you're one of the very few people um, that volunteer information, volunteer help, volunteer access. You know what I'm saying? We got some big things coming up. And I really was saving kind of that grand moment uh, to to recognize the people that helped me um, get to, you know, get to where I think we're about to go. Um, and, and also, also to be able to provide opportunities for those same people to um, share that access, share those platforms. Um, so, man, definitely, always, we always gonna be locked in, bro. It's 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 just like that. It's so much. Tough. I'm excited, bro. And like you said, it was about getting back on the sidelines and coaching and stuff um, at first. But I, I have to re recognize you have to walk through the doors that's opening for you. So. I closed that chapter finally. I put it to rest. And as you've noticed, I leaned into this full fed. So we're not even looking to go back, man. It's I'm I'm here now. So everybody stand by, man. <laughs> I'm gonna coach it like I did coaching, man. So it's it's all all energies forward, full, full steam ahead, man. So I appreciate you, man. Always. And uh I'm here anyway. Anytime you ask me, I'm here. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Well, that's what it's about, man. It's helping each other. You know, and it's, it's, that's it. Just helping each other, mm -hmm. you know, and as, as, a, you know, as a teacher, well, that's, I mean, that's literally what coaches are, right? You know, you want, you want to see people that you coach, people that you teach, you want to see them blossom. And you're one of them, bro. You're, you're, you're dude, you're freaking taking off. And I love it. I couldn't be, I, I'm telling you, I couldn't be more happy, you know, and I know I have a couple other people that, you know, that, uh, you know, that I've been, you know, helped along the way and, and right. one of the guys is like the head of gambling for Fox Sports now. He was like, he, we had a conversation and he was like, man, dude, he's, he's, he's mentioned, he goes on the show a couple of times, like, man, he goes, I remember when I was thinking if I wanted to stay in this or not. And he goes, and right. you told me that I was really good. And, and then he went on to bet QL sports and then Fox Sports picks. So dude, the dudes, I could never get a hold of him. I'm like, damn dog. Like yeah, you, yeah, where you yeah, in yeah, LA, you yeah. in Miami, New York, where you at, dog? He's like, man, yeah, he's yeah, busy. Nah, I'll tell you one thing, bro. The Marine in me won't let me be, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Loyalty is a big thing. So I've I've had it planned out in my head. Like, okay, I'm, once I reach certain milestones, um, I'm definitely going to reach out to certain people like yourself, um, like Aldo, who provided opportunity on Barroom Network, and we still have a good relationship. Um, yourself, like I said, it's it's been a few people, Herb Howard. There's been a few people, man, that, and um, that just reached out, embraced what we were trying to do, saw the talent, and said, "Hey, how can I help you? How can I help grow, man?" And uh, I'm grateful, man. I'm, I'm that part you guys don't get from me, at least my audience don't get from me a lot because I feel like I always have to be defensive in a sense or I takes. Um, but on the back end of this thing, man, I'm super humbled by everything that's happening with the channel for real. And I see your comment, uh, King Booker. We gonna handle that. We gonna handle that. I, my, my producer got with me after the show yesterday. We gonna make sure we handle that nerd. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get to some bears talk, baby. Let's get some bears talk. All right, our man just my man Justin is out. All right, and uh, how did you feel when you heard about the trade? 
10 days ago, 11 days ago. Hey man, like it's crazy because my mom was I me mean, my mom was texting back and forth um at the same time when I saw I saw the bears alert come down my phone and it was like I had to <laughs> I did this conversation Bob because it hit me like a ton of bricks like damn they actually they actually did it so uh it was a heartbreaker man because you know what I'm saying the kid poured so much into the city obviously wasn't set up for success um if you deny that then you know what I'm saying? You have selective, you, you have cognitive dissonance issues. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you probably <laughs> want to go get checked out. If you can't recognize the kid was, wasn't set up for success. Um, and even Ryan Post came out and recognized that. We covered the whole Ryan yep. Post presser on the show yesterday. And we broke it down clip by clip. Ryan Post came out and recognized his year one was a travesty. Year, year two, his year two, Ryan's year one. Ryan had to rebuild the roster. Year three is where you, the debate starts, right? Good morning, early smoke. The, the, the debate had to start at year one, right? So the question is, in year year three, I mean, did you give them enough weapons? Um, did you give enough weapons? And really, it's not about the weapons. It's about the offensive line support. Did you try? Yeah, we tried to bring the guy in from from Tennessee. Uh, names forget. Uh, it's early. Nate Davis. Only my first Nate Davis. Um, we tried. We tried there. We stuck with Braxton. We we tried to move Tevin over. We tried to get right. He tried with. Um, he tried with with uh, uh, what's the big guy receiver. I'm only on my first couple oh, calls. Chase, um, <laughs> Chase Claypool. Chase Claypool. Um, on Chase Claypool, he tried. He tried. So I think. I think he tried, um, but he learned just like Flus, Flus and Ryan basically, Justin's Justin's year three was their beta. Um, Flus so much in the sense of his coaching hires and what he did with Allen Williams and Luke Getzey. There, Justin Justin had got an opportunity to be their beta version of whoever they're gonna become as coaches and GMs in the future. And that's why I'm not I'm not giving them any um, I'm not giving any any rope any any leeway with this Caleb Williams situation. So my my takes about Caleb Williams um, to much to you know took much to the disagreement of probably people that are Caleb Williams stands is not about him. It's going to be about them grading and judging them putting together this roster and the Shane Waldron hire um, because those have to be home runs. The defensive coordinator hire has to be a home run because you're getting the second shot. Justin is not getting the second shot on this team. So you're going to have to own up to that. And I appreciate the fans that's going off into, you know, fanaticism land for Caleb Williams and the team. But that's not our job as media folks. Our job is to um, manage expectations, report the facts. And then on occasion, uh, you know, throw in a little bit of personal um you know feelings um and so on and so forth so yeah so that's a, that's a long explanation to a short to a short question <laughs> well yeah my and my thought was as i've said it in my I've, I've been able to keep it succinct is that you're right he did he wasn't given the chance you built right. up the team you know you now you built up the team to play where you can't it's going to be very difficult to fail and then you then you you, you ship them out <clears throat> Because in the one, here's the one thing that I've I've said repeatedly. I said it earlier with the guest right before you, who's talked. We were talking bulls, but he's also we ha- got a little bears talk in there. Mm-hmm. I said there's one thing about about teams you don't understand. It's not about talent, and it's and I'm not saying that Caleb is better than Justin because I don't believe he is talent wise. There's nothing that any NFL quarterback can do in the NFL that Justin can't. Right. Okay. There's the thing is, and I and my my uh, my proof or my argument was this. You're old enough to remember in 1985 when the Bears won the Super Bowl, okay, or in 2006 or January 2007 when the Bears went back to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Was Jim McMahon or Rex Grossman were they the best quarterback in the NFL at the time? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, <laughs> but what what the hell was Jim McMahon? He was a leader of men, right? And that's the thing that we had. And now you're yeah. taking that out, and now you're putting a youngster in, okay, to lead men it's going to be difficult a youngster with an attitude all right the guy's already got 10 11 million dollars he's already got an attitude he's already got stuff he's doing things unconventionally doing different things and then i'm not saying i'm not saying that i'm against 
you know, going against the grain. Right. But when you have a team that was trending upward with their leader and you take their leader out, yeah, that, that has a problem for it. And, and some people say, well, you just all you gotta do is win. Uh, okay, well, that's what you gotta do. And some of the some of the things he's he does are some of the things that the last quarterback did. Right. He's not he, he's not running, he's not getting chased by Utah. He's not gonna be getting chased by Utah State anymore. Yeah. He's not gonna be getting chased by, by Fresno State anymore. Right? He's gonna be getting chased by dudes who are almost as fast as him, but 60, 80 pounds heavier than him, ready to rip his head off. Right. So we're gonna uh, so you know and, yeah. You yeah. deal a hell of a lot superior, more superior athlete. So that was that was my issue with it. Um, but it looks like it's going to be Caleb. They're talking install. You know, we installed something when we met him in L.A. We're going to continue install. Like you ain't continuing install if you don't pass on. Yeah, 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 you know that. what I mean. It's I like that. I made that statement on the show yesterday. Did install, you? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You First don't. Get was- my, you don't get my stuff if you're not part of the team. That it's a done deal. Yeah. I want to. I want to go back to what you said about leadership. Um, because I realize both of us probably have young followers and not to say, um, you know what I'm saying? Young people can't be leaders, man. But if anything, um, I kind of hung my head on, you know, my entire life from being a captain of a football team to being spotted early on as a young Marine and called out to be a leader from boot camp all the way through. Um, it's not, it's not a given, bro. It is not a given. It's not. Um, a concept of born, you, you're born, born with certain traits. Um, as a leader, you, you're born with certain raw ability. Like you might, I'll give, I'll give you something I was talking to my son about last night, right? Because I need y'all to stand by. We, <laughs> we got something huge coming up for the channel. But I was something I was talking to my son about, about, you know what I'm saying? Just the privilege of being an attractive person per se, right? There's certain raw traits that you're born with if you're attractive. As a person, if you're you have a certain build, stature, or whatever, it sets the table for people to listen to you and to you for you to be influenced by people, right? That's just it. But the other traits of being a leader of men and or women, you have to they have to be developed, right? Your interpersonal skills, what we call in corporate, since I got my corporate uh, look on today, <laughs> what we call soft skills, right? Your soft skills meaning those non-technical skills. It's great that you can throw a uh, 60 yard nine route on the on point over the left shoulder, right? But if you can do that, if you can do that, but you don't know how to galvanize and speak to other people to to make them want to run through a brick wall for you, that's not, you know what I'm saying? What good is it, right? You know what I'm saying? So um, it's not going to be given. And and Jalen Jalen Johnson made that clear in his you know in his interview that hey yeah. bro, when you come in here we gonna uh we gonna test your metal and rightfully so there has to be a rite of passage i went through this thing i'm old enough to have gone through the crucible uh at paris island south carolina 1994 um the crucible was the last little element before you graduated boot camp it was a, a sleep deprivation course where the first three days or four days out in the field where you don't get no sleep for about 72 to whatever the next extension is hours, right? And they give you minimum food, food, and they just throw you out there and say survive, right? It's your rite of passage. So he has to go through that gauntlet. And you know about that locker room gauntlet. You know about the mm-hmm. locker room politics. Like it's not gonna be given, bro. You gotta earn everything. And I hope they do make them not as a punishment, but as to, to test his metal because. If he's going to be a champion at this level, all of those things need to be figured out. Yeah, and it's it, you're right; they are. And you know, um, I said it before; I'll say it again. Yeah, I'm a big Justin Fields fan, but I'm also a Bears fan as well. You know, and so now that they've made the decision, as much as I don't like it, I'm still rooting for the Bears, and that means Caleb Williams. So I hope he does; he's able to produce. I hope he's able. I hope he's half as good as everybody hypes him up to be. All right, um, because he's got he's stepping into a situation that many people feel, myself included, that this is the best situation that a, a number one overall draft pick has ever stepped into. This is a team that won seven games that, sh- that could have won ten games right. last year. Okay, this is a team that's got in the last, you know, in, in the in the last six games, they're the number one team in number one defense. Excuse me, in the NFL. 
Right. So you're going to a team that's got a Montez Sweat, a Jalen Johnson, uh, a Jaquan Brisker, a, 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 a improving Javon Dexter, and Andrew, a, a Bill Andrew Billings. Like you're walking in with a, a playoff ready. I don't think Super Bowl ready, but I think a deep playoff run ready defense. And you add so yeah, it's I'm hoping he does well. And to me, the most important thing that he has is Shane Waldron. Yes, that's the most important thing, in my opinion, because, you know, my my whole my whole thing was, you know, coaching matters. All right. Yes. And if you don't if you don't believe me, you're, you're full of it. You know, you're just not you're just you're just wanting to be contrary just to be a contrarian. That's it, because yeah. you have to understand that coaching matters. And so this guy can has developed. So I'm looking forward to, to, to him. I'm looking forward to his, you know, how fast he grasps this offense, uh, how fast he's able to connect with. DJ Moore with Keenan Allen with Cole Komet with the new other new tight end. His name escapes me. How about how fast he's able to connect with the new receiver if we get one? So let's talk about that. With number one, it's most likely going to be the young man Caleb Williams out of uh, SC. What do you want? What do you want to, to see them do with the number nine pick? Wide receiver, O line, D end. Yeah. Your thoughts. I'm gonna go back to the, the quote that uh, Harrison Harrison Graham requoted or retweeted out yesterday, and, and Matt Eberflus was saying that they were gonna go with a position that either supports the quarterback or affects the quarterback. Which to me, I believe the best support for Caleb Williams in this year one is to have a dominant defense, not a good defense, not an okay defense, a dominant defense, a defense that gives him as many opportunities and reps on offense versus live bullets as possible, right? meaning they shut down teams as much as possible. And so I'm hoping for the benefit of the team, I'm hoping nine turns into the option to give them both a more dominant or more, you know what I'm saying, blue chip tackle or a weapon at wide receiver or edge or interior defensive line, right? So either either you get a tremendous upgrade um at center or tackle wide receiver interior defensive line or edge somebody that can be dominant um in those in those forms but i'm hoping that the, the first pick regardless is a dominant interior defensive lineman or edge rusher tech that can round out this defense and put him in position to uh in a short field because i think regardless the plan is to run the ball early on with those running it better backs. be control the clock you know what i'm saying um, I talk about Matt LaFleur's playing with Jordan Love all the time, being the prototype. Because we talk about development all the time, Sean. We say, well, the quarterback needs to be developed. It needs to be developed. Nobody quantifies what develop actually what means. means. <laughs> develop yeah. to me, right. Develop to me is uh, quarterback skill set development, how you carry the ball, how your foot placement, how you're using physics to you know create torque from the ground up through your fingertips. That all happens off season with, with your, you know, with Quincy Avery and all those private quarterback coaches and all that other stuff, Jordan Palmer, right? But development, as far as the team's perspective is concerned, is what program do you have the quarterback on to slowly uh, 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 migrate him or introduce the offense to him over time? So the playbook is this wide, uh, weeks four through six, I'm giving you this much to master then and I'm going to devise a game plan around it to make sure you stay within that. So like Matt LaFleur did with Jordan Love, you saw the first game last year, what they required him to do in that first game wasn't the same that he was doing in our last game version. Right? The, game, the offense was much more wide open. He was making plays um, versus in the first game, it would get him to third and short and say, hey, just complete this quick hitch, just out this dig, this slant, something short that we know you can do that doesn't put a whole lot of pressure on it, but to the outside eye, it's gonna look like you lighten up the you know scoreboard. So that slowly ramp that that slow ramp up, which Luke Getze should have done with Justin, you know what I'm saying, just to you know take a shot. But that slow ramp up is what I'm looking to see happen for him. And then also the dominance of his defense for this whole thing to come together. Like it's it has to be that complimentary, complimentary football. Yeah, I agree. And you know what the thing is, you know, they've upgraded the running back room. They've added depth in the offensive line. I think they did I did I think they did well with the center position. They got a starter. I know granted it's going to be uh it's only a one year contract for uh the center, 
But I mean, it, it starts and, and there, let's not forget. All right. Last year, Nate Davis had the personal situation where his mother was ill. That offensive line that they had that they intended to start game one didn't start till week nine or 10. Right. Together. All right, they didn't start together. And then they had Tevin Jenkins on the right side as opposed to the left side, which personally I think was better, but nonetheless. Yeah. Um, so that the way they had it, when we go over the half the season, you don't have your starting offensive line in place. So that's another big issue that people un- don't understand. And I I hope and I assume, you know, Shane Waldron loves to run, run, loves to run 13 personnel, 23 personnel. You know, he'll have three tight ends in there. And this is what I'm talking about. It That – his affinity for that takes care of a lot of things for me. Right. One, you're going to run the ball. Okay. Right. Two, as long as you keep Kari blasting game, imagine Kari blasting game. Imagine a 23, 23 personnel and right. a tight end is in motion coming across. Or hell, even if it's off, you know me, I want my offensive lineman in motion. He reports <laughs> eligible and come into motion, just clears off one side behind Every the tight day. end, behind the fullback, open. behind, and here comes a running back. You know what I'm saying? It's just bulldozes. And 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 it steamrolls everything out of the way because we need one yard. So that's right. going to take care of our short yardage situation. And no more tush push and 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 these stupid ass screens, these lateral, these bubble screens that get blown up because Darnell Mooney doesn't want to block. Okay, mm-hmm. but it's also going to create a, it's going to create an identity, and it's going to create confidence in the quarterback because what's going to happen is now all of a sudden you're going to fake. It's going to be a play action, and that tight end is going to leak out. The backside yeah. tight end is going to come across. The fullback might leak out. And now all of a sudden, now you don't know what to do. And it's going right. to give this his quarterback confidence by running the ball, pounding the ball, pounding the ball. And, and like we, we know you can throw the ball. Mm-hmm. Slow your roll. You will get you there. Trust me. And if right. he's able to say, hey, yeah, I, I trust you, coach. Even if he, if he only has 18 passes the first game or two, that's not the important thing. The important thing is he's got – they have to respect our run. And if they do, the quarterback, Caleb – most likely Caleb Williams will be able to pick people apart because you will be afraid of it. And that's what I, and I hope that Shane Waldron takes that, that approach, pound it, pound it, pound it before you let him, we don't need Caleb Williams to win us games. Just right. don't lose them is where it is. You know, look at Tom Brady. You know, he, that was his in the first, he didn't lose the Super Bowl and the, he didn't win those first two Super Bowls. That was the defense. Right. That was the defense. That was Teddy Bruschi. That was, uh, with McGinnis, that was that whole thing, and then he got better. And that's the, if you if you take that same timeline with 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 Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams will lead us to a Super Bowl because of his defense, because of the offense. And I hope Shane Waldron goes that route. I got I got a question for you, Sean, based off the hill hit on the heels of Black Belt be- Ben's comment, right? Two mm-hmm. one two questions. One, do you think the fans are prepared for this style of offense that we believe we're going to see early on? Right. Two. The second question is, do you feel like Caleb is going to be patient enough and accepting of the fact that he needs that slow ramp up program? Because I think the fans are thinking they're going to get electric highlight plays like they saw him yards. in college and they're setting themselves up for disappointment because that's not the program. One, he's not ready for it. Nope. He's not ready for it. He didn't do it in college. He doesn't do it. He's not running the NFL style often in college. But back to the question, do you think um, the fan base is ready for the style of offense they need to play to win early on? And is he he going to be patient enough in that process to to let those things happen and play out the way that we're saying that how you ramp this offense up? The fan base, we have too many – we have a lot more meathead fan – Chicago Bear fans than we do intelligent Bear fans. So if – because the intelligent ones understand it. All right, but the meatheads are like, why is he throwing a K? Why doesn't Caleb have 30 passes? He needs 35 passes. He needs 40 passes. He let him light it up. He was a Heisman Trophy winner. Take it easy. Fan base is not going to be ready, generally speaking. Yeah. All right. Will he be ready? That's the question. That's what I don't know. Because if he if he understands, and, and, and here's the thing, I hope Shane Waldron sits his ass down. Like, look, here's what I want. I don't care about your numbers first half of the season. I don't give a shit. I want right. completions. I want completions. I want completions. So I'm hitting slants. I'm hitting hitches. I'm hitting, I'm hitting uh, digs. I'm hitting deep out. I mean, outs, quick out. I'm hitting all these things. I want you to get a rhythm. Right. Get comfortable with these guys. This is your first time with DJ Moore and Caleb and, uh, and Keenan Allen and, and, and uh, Cole Komet and the other, t- and these running backs coming out of the backfield. Get 
a rhythm, get a foundation. We got the defense to hold us up. Don't worry. We got the defense. We got the other side. Take your time. Right. And if he if he does, if he's willing to say, hey, okay, coach, I trust you. Damn, week 17, week 18, this offense next year is going to be crazy because Caleb, with his talents, he will, he will, his talent and the supporting cast, he will develop at a much faster rate than most of number one overall quarterbacks because they haven't had this much talent. Yeah. In conjunction with a guy who can bring a guy, a quarterback along, as I said, Waldron for me is the is the, is the X factor. Yeah. Yeah. And if he listens to Waldron, wow, the the the, the possibilities are end, endless. And that to me that hurts because I know that could have been Justin Fields, and it's not. So we'll move on. But yeah. if Caleb listens, and this is coaching matters, if you listen to your coaches, yeah. a guy who's proven, man, you, you it may you may take baby steps first, and that could be frustrating. But if you if you look big picture, and embrace the baby steps, yeah. man, you'll be running in no time. You'll be running by mid season, and yeah. if we, if we're running by mid season, Coach T. Yeah, I, I, I know a lot of fans won't listen, but this is what I'm saying, and and carefully documenting the process. That's what I told our followers, our subscribers yesterday on the show. We're gonna we're listen. I'm not going head over heels for nothing. I'm I'm attacking this like I do a work project, right? You know, I, there was lessons learned on the heels of the Luke Getsy situation, Justin Fields situation, and even ourselves. We, we take a step back as media and say, okay, what, what can I do better? I'm not giving Shane Waldron any assumption, assumptive credit, right? He's going to have to, I'm going to have to see it on film and take the fans along for the journey with me and say, okay, he's on point. He's doing exactly what we're saying to do. He's attacking the, uh, the game plan through the, through the run game, right? 12, 13, 23, 32 personnel, like you described, right? Playing bully ball, going play action, setting Caleb up for short third down distance throws that he can easily make, right? This defense, how we draft, right? If the play, the pieces aren't in place that I feel like we'll have a dominant defense to support him, I'm going to call it out. I'm going to say something about it. I'm going to say, listen, look, they went offensive heavy, Right. They got they got say, for instance, they got all offensive players. Right. In the draft, and you're talking. They, they basically drafted all. No, you're, saying you're talking in the draft. They get all. Off, in, they in the all draft, offense. Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and say they go all offense. Right. The casual fan would be like, oh, yeah, we're ready. We're going to light up the scoreboard. Right. And I'd be like, well, does the kid need that right now? Is that the smart approach to air quotes developing him? I'm not going to be I'm not going to feel comfortable with that. But if we solidify this defense. And we run the ball and we we come out early on, like you said, and he has like novice numbers, right? And it's like, it's not, it's not, it's not fantasy league numbers, right? That is it's not fantasy league numbers, but we're winning games, we're winning games by controlling the clock and dominating the time of possession. Then I'm gonna say, listen, we're on to something. We can the, the fireworks are coming later on. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna be we're we're gonna be in a different position of defending Caleb Williams. Yeah. Um, to yeah. from these same people who have been, you know, because they're going to jump off the bandwagon because they're not getting their their fantasy stats numbers and they're not winning their fantasy league. So, um, I think this is just always interesting conversation and dynamic you can look forward to. I like I like the little you know the little the little back and forth chess game with the fan base and playing, you know, <laughs> playing you know opposite of you know because it really yeah. it really is a backwards sometimes mindset to how how fans think football actually go and what we need to do like for example and i'll, I'll shut up we stopped we ended the season with an eight point loss to green bay right everybody was down on the team oh we suck with every throw the whole baby out with the bathwater right it was an eight point loss that same Green Bay team goes points. to Dallas and eviscerates them, right? And people can't see, or if you recognize football, you recognize, you know football, you know styles make fights, right? So our game plan wasn't that far off in trying to control the clock, time of possession, playing bend but don't break defense versus Dallas saying, oh, we got as much firepower power as you guys, Green Bay. We're going to have to, we're going to try and have a shootout with you. Right, that's not the way to beat Green Bay. And let's not forget, Coach T. Real quick, we didn't have Jalen. We didn't have a couple people on defense. Jalen Johnson was one of them who didn't play that last game. 
And we still held them to a season that was like a, uh, 17 points when they were averaging some crazy uh, hell of a lot more than 17 points at that point. Yeah, yeah, we have to, we have to, we have to recognize how we how how does how does this team have that might be a great question, right? How does this team have to play to win a division? What play style? Because that that's what it boils down to a lot of times. Division to division, game to game, is what is your play style? to win division, particularly to beat Green Bay right now, they're so hot. We have to keep, we have to keep those dudes off the field. You know what I'm saying? We have to control the clock. Keep, keep Matt LaFleur watching the game because he's not calling plays. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Put him in a position where he's watching the game, mad at his defensive coordinator because he can't stop us because we're running, running the ball down their throat. Pause, no diddy. (laughs) <laughs> no private jet to it in the Caribbean island, but never mind. Sorry. <laughs> I, <have a> <laughs> um, I hear you, and I, and I agree. So you want you want so now you want you want a, a defensive end? Are you cool with Demarcus Walker, or, or, or do you want the depth in case Martez Sweat goes out? What do you want with nine then? Because you, so are you good most, enough? I want, I want the most game wrecking interior or exterior defensive lineman we can find whether okay. it's an edge or interior, because I think what they did with uh, Dexter last year, I don't know, towards the end of the season, I don't know if anybody noticed, they started moving him out to the outside as a pass rusher because he does have the ability to win pass rush moves on the outside. So even if we get uh, an interior defensive guy that can be a game record, right, on third down, put your best, put your NASCAR package out there and let them, let them eat. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree more, and I, I love a NASCAR. And that's what I'm thinking. Hopefully Noah Sewell is able to contribute a little more because I like him coming off the edge. Uh, you know, at, at Oregon, he was he was all over the place. He reminds me of a, of a Troy Palomalu, maybe a little a, a lot less athletic Troy Palomalu, but the fact is he was he was blitzing, he was in coverage, he was, you know, at the linebacker position, he was, he was, able, he was able to do a multitude of things. And why not use it? And hopefully this new defensive coordinator – Mr. Washington is able to use him in that matter. And, and it could be just for key points. Like maybe he's a one trick pony, but right. damn it. Mark. So was Mark Anderson. And he got him a lot of money, got him a nice little contract uh, j- just for being a one trick pony as well. So you got to be able to use those one trick ponies in the, in the situation that they're, that they benefit the most. And if he does that, and the one thing I'm looking for, I'm looking to see the, the development of this, this defensive line. Coach Washington at the line coach has a crazy reputation, right. crazy reputation for de- developing and getting the absolute best out of defensive linemen. Because he, he remember he said he goes, "Oh, we're going to get home with four. Well, I ain't gonna, we ain't gonna have the blitz. We're gonna get home with four. Right. And I mean, he said that not confidently, defiantly. Oh, we, right. you know, I double dog yeah, you telling me we ain't get home with four. And if that's the case, that means Javon Dexter takes a big step forward. All right, it means he, you know, Walker, um, Zach Pickens, man. I mean, that, and I want to see him take a step. If he takes a step forward, like, like Dexter did last year, wow, Pickens and Dexter, right? Yeah, I'm okay because I'm okay with I'm okay w- with that and not getting a a stud defensive end because next year's DN class is going to be deep, and I can wait another year. All right, me personally, coach. I say get him a wide receiver because I don't know how long Keenan Allen is going to be here. He's 32 years old. Right. right. Well, I should say he'll be 32 old. next month. And, uh, you know, another year, two. Okay, cool. But Caleb's going to be here a lot longer than two years. So I need someone for him to be to develop with. Um, so I, I'd say a wide receiver or I'd say a wide receiver because there's going to be. Which wide receiver, though? <laughs> that's So that's, that's the thing. I, I love Adunze. Will Adunze be there? I don't know. But what if Joe Alt's there? What if what if what if Fashanu's there? There's gonna be good tackles there. What if Brock Bowers and Adun- Adunze are there and Alt? I mean, because what because here's the thing, you know how the draft goes. Someone's gonna be crazy enough, jump up to take JJ McCarthy, and that pushes everybody down a spot. Right. And we're already taking it. looks like we're already gonna take Caleb, is what it looks like. So that's the one mm-hmm. spot. All right, you got Caleb, you have Drake May, you have Jaden Daniels, and if someone jumps up and takes JJ McCarthy, that's one. And let's not forget there. about Let's not forget a Marvin Harrison Jr. and then Malik Neighbors. Okay, maybe a Jared Verse. That's seven picks already, and we're and we still have guys on the board that we want. Do you, That's do why you, I, listen, if, if if Bowers is there, 
if Bob was there and we're on the clock, it, I say that's a luxury pick because we already got two tight ends. As okay. much as fans, fans with, 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 of course, you know, moan and groan about it, trade out because that means you have offensive linemen and defensive linemen still behind them, and mm-hmm. you can still get a wide receiver, O lineman, a D lineman. You can still – you can still beef this team up significantly versus taking a guy that would be a luxury pick. Cause, cause I, although Shane likes to use 13 personnel, like again, you know, that's like having putting the rims on your car and tinted windows and you don't have a functioning engine, right? You have to make sure <laughs> there should be no, there should be no question marks on that offensive line after this draft. None whatsoever. We should have a center. We should have tackles, guards. If you make this move from Justin Fields, sure up things for this guy and make sure that the engine of this offense is functioning, flowing, and, and able to perform whatever. Hold up in five-man protection, and then you can you he could he could pull this off. I believe. Let me ask you a question then. No, go ahead. How crazy would, would you be if he said, you know what, bump every mother hubbard in here? I'm <laughs> taking JC. JPJ with number nine. Would you be okay with that? Because that would shore that thing up. For the that's it. Not you. I mean, I would be, only... I'd be okay with it, but it's like, man, it's like I'm trying to I'm trying to draw analogy or comparison for what it feels like. It's like I'm, I'm I'm a business person, right? I'm a chess player also. I like the win win. I like the gamesmanship of you understanding the game of the NFL draft recognizing having your board racked and stacked the way it should be and say, I can get JPJ here. If I still trade back, I can get, I can go two for one. I can get, mm-hmm. uh, I can get a Byron, what's his face, the defense alignment or or the edge, right? The edge from Alabama. I can get one of those game record turn. players, right? And I can still get JPJ here, right? It's still, let's, let's not, let's not throw the whole, reason why we wanted him to keep Justin Fields out the door. The idea was to haul a trade back. Well, you're not getting a haul, but at least still build the roster and the team the way you should. And then, mind you, next year, this is why next year, super lofty expectations if they're able to accomplish what we expect them to this year because next year we got eight picks. So if you can get a star defensive offensive lineman or an offensive weapon out of this draft, and one of those players be JPJ, and one of them be a, a, a superior edge or interior defense alignment, right? You plug two major holes, and you got Keenan Allen for this year. Well, you got eight picks next year. You can say, hey, Keenan might come through and be like, hey, I want more money. I want extension, all this other stuff. We like, yeah, yeah, Keenan, it's, it's been cool and all, um, but nah, we good. <laughs> uh, we going to go ahead and draft this young kid. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Okay, yeah, I would think I would think it, you draft a, a receiver and you get one later, uh, mm-hmm. because this is so deep. Because and in, in let him sit under DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. I mean, you talk about you know, th- there's just there's a a level of of learning that you get from being around great players. Right, right, right. You know, and whoever we get might not be a star like Keenan Allen or or or, or DJ Moore. But he might be a key third down guy. He might turn himself into because Keenan Allen's a great guy in in, in finding holes and zones. So right. you might get a fourth or fifth round pick, or it could be Tyler Scott, or it could be uh, uh, Bayless Jones, who right. who because of his speed, people are scared of him. But now he's able to sit down and find the holes in the zone and getting the ball into their hands. Yeah. That's scary as anything. So that, that's a key component right there, Sean. You mentioned that somebody brought this up the other day, and I was like, I didn't think about it that way. Keenan Allen could be Caleb's kind of Travis Kelsey, right? And I know he doesn't play tight end, but y'all, y'all yeah. stay with me here. Yeah, his Gronk, what, his what, Kelsey, what, I get you. What Kelsey does for Patrick Mahomes, a lot of people don't recognize, and, and, and Patrick and, and Travis both said this. Travis is so good at reading coverages that, like you said, he knows when it's whatever coverage it is, zone it is, they may have this route on, but Travis will go and just sit in the hall, sit in the hole of that zone. Yep. And Patrick just knows, hey, look off and throw Travis the ball. Yep. And we look at it as, oh man, he's reading those coverage. He's breaking down the defense. 
No, they have oh. a thing. <laughs> it's not. They have a thing where Patrick is looking him off, looking off Travis and coming back to him with his eyes and throwing to him because he knows Travis knows where the zone is and knows where to sit down in, like you mentioned, the holes. And Keenan Allen can be that guy for um, Caleb for a few years. And also, I don't know that DJ maybe on that because that's the next level. That's next level. So DJ might not be there yet, but Keenan could probably, hey, hey, this is how I do it. And he could bring the rest of the guys along. Like, this is how I do it. You know what I'm saying? So there, there's, uh, there's a there's a good good handoff there for you here, like kind of leadership or uh, baton handoff thing that they can do right there. And I also like the fact that this does not get it twisted. DJ Moore can still learn from Keenan. I mean, DJ Moore is a, is a legit vet. And if you're a legit vet, and the, the reason great people say great is because you never, ever, ever think you're, you're, you're done getting better at your craft. And if you watch Keenan Allen, like, okay, well, he does really well in zones. Okay, how can I get better? If you do that with, if DJ Moore does that, and he becomes another zone killer where he could just find a zone and, you know, or just feel it like, okay, I, I think this guy's going to go. I know I should go two yards further, but boom, I'm going to stop. And then him and him and the quarterback are, are in sync and understand that man, that, that is priceless. So there's a lot to go around. Keelan Allen's going to bring his 10 plus 10 years of experience, you know, to this, uh, excuse me, to this wide receiver room. And that includes DJ Moore. And, right. you know, I, I expect the, the, the play of this, of this wide receiving core to be better. And if they do draft a rookie, you know, whether it's with nine or if they trade back at 12 or, you know, later, this, everyone in that room is going to get better. And that's going to help this, this offense going to help the new quarterback. It's going to help this defense. It's going to help this team. And that's what I'm really, really excited about is this team getting much better. Okay. And, and, and the question we start having is not, is not if we win the division, or if we make the playoffs, is how deep in the playoffs are we going? That's right. that's what I want us to be, to get to, and we're not there yet. So we'll get there so soon. How, how do you? How far do you think? If all things pan out, how, how far do you think? What's the what's the ceiling for this team? You know, what I'm this saying? year or this year or overall? What's that now? This year or overall? This year, this year, this year. Mm, I say uh, divisional round of the playoffs. Yeah. I don't think I don't think they'll get to the AMC, NFC title game. Uh, I think that the ceiling is the divisional round. They maybe maybe get the wild card. I right? maybe losing the wild card, but the the ceiling for me is the is the uh, divisional round. Yeah. Next year, the ceiling should be should be the NFC title game. And at that point, that's that's where it is. NFC title game or bust. Yeah. I'm not gonna say Super Bowl because anything can happen. One crazy play can happen late in the game, and all oh, you know what I mean. But and then no. at that point. I think next year we will be perennial NFC title contenders. Yeah, so. I, yeah. Only, only difference is next year. I'm, I'm again with with what you've done. You, you know, what I'm saying essentially Ryan Poe has made the swing. What I'm calling the swing. You're swinging with this decision to move on from Justin Fields. You're swinging for the Super Bowl. That means I'm one or two years away. The expectation, if they follow the program, is next year Super Bowl. They I mean they might win it. They might not win it. But the expectation is we get to the big game. Uh, we're, we're, we're meeting up to go to the game. Uh, <laughs> we're meeting up. Hey, so what you do? We're going to the game, right? It's, it's, <laughs> once in a lifetime, twice in a lifetime for us type deal, we're actually going to the game. So, yeah, I agree. Um, the ceiling for this year would be like wild card, divisional game. But next year, it's going to be – if they do that this year, next year it's going to be Super Bowl of us having those eight picks – coming off of a year where you pretty much have a full roster and everything else is about luxury picks uh, in 20, 2025. Right. Yeah. Yep. Coach T, great stuff, buddy. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for, for your time this morning. Do me a favor. Let everyone know where they can find you and your work online. Always. Y'all see it down at the bottom. Down here. Down there. Right there. Bears 360 <laughs> underscore Coach T on Chicago Bears 360. Also, man, glad to announce, man, we're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcast now. We're on Facebook. Uh, I'm not doing the Roku thing yet. You got you got to link me in on that. Like, give me the <laughs> give me the give me the quick class on that. Uh, but yeah, we're definitely on Spotify Podcast and Apple Podcast now. And uh, coming to a station near you, man. Just stand by. We got some good stuff coming up, bro. Dude, great stuff, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate your time as always, bro. All right, appreciate you, man. All right, we'll talk soon. All right, peace. All right. 
Guys, that was Coach T from Chicago Bears 360. Coach T joining us. I'm excited uh, about, uh, you know, our conversation. It was great stuff. But we got to run, baby. We got to run. That two hours is coming, gone. I want to thank uh, my guys, Adam Shalafu, for coming on, talking Bulls and Little Bears with me. And I want to thank Coach T for coming on, uh, uh, for coming on, talking Bears with me. So, listen, I got to. I got to take off. I, you know, it's, you know, it's Wednesday. I got to go pick up the warden <laughs> from CrossFit, uh, but have a good day. All right. We're going to replay this at six o'clock tonight. Uh, so you can check it. If you missed any part of it, you can, re you can check it out at six o'clock tonight. Uh, have a phenomenal, phenomenal day. Uh, the White Sox home opener is tomorrow. Uh, the Cubs home, the Cubs opener uh, is, is tomorrow. They're in Texas playing the Rangers. Their home opener is next Monday. Okay, so, um, yeah, enjoy this weekend. If you're a baseball fan, you know, your season is here. All right, get ready to enjoy it. It's a long one, but it's here. If you're a Cub fan, you probably you have a lot more to be excited than the Sox fans. But, hey, at least <sighs> go to baseball games, I guess. They got good food there. They got new, new stuff at Sox Park, so <clears throat> we'll be able to check that out. So, for everyone here at Sports Zone Chicago, Elliot Baez, our executive producer, Clarence Council III, our social media guy, my co-host, Adam Sancho Maya Akai. I'm your boy, the Superback, Sean Sierra. Guys, have a phenomenal show. I mean, have a phenomenal day. Rest of the day, all right? And I will see you on Friday. I am out. <laughs>